In part 2 of this project, we are going to do the following. We are going to create a Quartos project, synthesize the top module, connect the design to the FPGA pins, and in the end program the DE1 SOC development board and do a demonstration with our project. Let's create now a new Quartos project, synthesize our BCD timer and program the FPGA. You need the similar project folder like we use for the others. And we are going to create a Quartus project in the Send folder. Let's open Quartus. Let's start the new project wizard. Next, we change the source folder. Select this. Here we type project. Next. Next. Now we browse for the RTL files. We select all the files except the test benches. Open. Next. Now we select the FPGA. This is my FPGA model on the DE1 SOC. Here you don't change anything. This is the project overview and finish. The first thing you need to do is to select files. Click on timer top, right click and set as top level entity. Let's synthesize design to check out if our very low code is correct. Ok, so our design synthesized successfully. Let's check out the critical warnings. It says that our project is missing a synopsis design constraint file. Also that the timing requirements are not met. Let's create the synopsis design constraint file. You go to tools, timing analyzer, file, new SDC file. You need to copy and paste this code. I explained in previous project what is the role of this file, but as a summary the synthesis tool knows now that it has to synthesize a design using a 50 MHz clock. We save this, you write here project, save, close and close. Now let's synthesize again our design. Ok, the synthesis finished again. Let's check out the critical warnings again. As you can see, all the critical warnings disappeared except for this one because we need to assign some pins to our RTL. Click on assignments and select pin planner. Now you need to fill all of these depending on your FPGA board settings. After you finish adding the pins, it should look something like this. This may differ according to your FPGA board. We close this and now we synthesize again. As you can see, we removed all the critical warnings. Let's check out now how the design was synthesized. As you can see, we have the timer, 3 binary to BCD converters, and 6 7 segment display decoders. Let's compare now the synthesis results with the Verilog RTL code. What we see over here is the timer top module. The inputs and the outputs are here and here. Next we have all the instances that we created in the Verilog code. We have the timer over here. The three binary to BCD converters over here and six seven segment displays. Pretty cool, right? Let's compare now the very low code used for the timer with the synthesis results. You can see the module's ports here and here. Let's expand the module. Okay, we have some logic here. Let's see if it's similar with the design. We have the one second counter, which is here. And next we have the other three counters for the seconds, minutes and hours, which are over here. The one second counter is the largest, as it has 32 bits and it uses a 32 bit adder. The other counters are using smaller adders. The ifs over here are translated into these comparators. So, we have a simple hardware circuit used to measure the time. Pretty cool, right? Let's analyze the binary to BCD converter now. 
After we expand it, we can see a very large combinational circuit. But this was expected. As I said so, it will happen in the first part. Here we have the input pipeline register, which is over here. Here we have the output pipeline register, which is over here. These registers are very important because they isolate this large combinational cloud from the rest of the circuit. This will allow us to synthesize our circuit to a larger frequency. And next, the circuit from here to here is a cascade of logic elements, comparators and adders, which is described over here. So this is how a binary to binary coded decimal converter looks like. As I said in the first part, the double-double implementation is purely combinational. If we expand the 7-segment decoder, you can see a simple decoder made out of logic gates. If you like this video, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Another cool thing to see is the maximum frequency this circuit can be synthesized. You need to open the assembler and click on the report. Expand this. And if you look at the Fmax summary, we can see that our circuit can be synthesized at a maximum frequency of 211 MHz. Let's program the FPGA now. Press Auto Detect, Change File, select Project.SOF, click Program and Configure, and start. The FPGA programs successfully. Now your timer is ready to go. After you implement the FPGA timer project on your development board, it should look something like this. This is how the timer project should behave on your FPGA board. As you can see, each second the value displayed on the 7 segment display is incremented. If 59 seconds have passed, then the minutes value is incremented also. The same rule is valid for the hours, but we don't have enough time to see this happening right now but I guarantee you that it works in the same manner. This timer can count up to 99 hours, 59 minutes and 59 seconds, so it will roll over after each 100 hours. If you reset it, then it will come back to zero and start counting again. Please tell me what you think about this cool FPJ project for beginners. If you like this project, please press the like button and subscribe. And thanks for watching! If you like this tutorial and you're interested in an easy path for learning Verilog for FPGA or ASIC design and verification, I gladly recommend you my course Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Verification. You can find the link in the video description. For more tutorials and support, you can join our Facebook community. Your strong Verilog foundation is only one click away.